Dawn and I'm glad to be with you here today on Digital SML and hopefully very soon I'll be able to be with you in person too. Today we're starting by recapping on what you learned last Sunday and we learned that God keeps his promises. Way long time ago God promised that he would send his son to save the world. And last week we heard in the story that Jesus was born and that that promise was fulfilled. Some of the first people to visit Jesus were the shepherds. And they knew of this promise and they were so excited to go and to meet Jesus. And after their visit, they went back home and after checking on their flocks, they spent the night rejoicing and glorifying God that he had kept his promise to the world. I'm sure that was a day that they would never forget. Do you remember the memory verse that you learned last week? Well, let's just take a look at it now. Does anyone know where this city is? Well, this is the modern city of Bethlehem. And in our memory verse, it's called the city of David. This is what the angels said to the shepherds. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Shortly, Leslie is going to come and tell you about other people who came to worship the Saviour and King. But before she does that, we're going to join together and sing Jesus is the King. Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised one, the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord. He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. He is the King. He commanded the fishermen, hey, come follow me. And they did, and they did, and they did. Because Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one. The Son of God, Jesus is the Lord. He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. He is the King. He commanded the evil ones, hey, come out of Him. And they did, and they did, and they did. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the Jesus, is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promise one, the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. He is the King. 
The whole world is singing a song. Have you heard it? The wind is whispering it in the trees. The rain is dancing it on the rooftops. The whole of creation is singing it out together. God loves us. He made us. He is very pleased with us. It's the song that's been sung since the beginning. The song God created everything in his world to sing. It's the song without words. It's the song you were created to sing too. We forgot our song long ago when we turned and ran away from God. But Jesus has come to back to bring us home to God and to give us back our song. So go on, sing your song. Hi boys and girls, I hope you're all well and I hope you're all being good for your mums and dads. And I know I'm really looking forward to seeing you all and getting back together again in SML very, very soon. So in last week's story, Helen told us all about how Mary and Joseph had travelled to Bethlehem for Jesus, our Saviour's birth. A Saviour? Can you tell me another word for a Saviour? That's right, it's someone who rescues people. It could be a fireman or a lifeguard. What can Jesus rescue you and me from? That's right, he can rescue us from sin. But why? Why do we need to be rescued? Well, because all of us are born with sin. And one day God will punish those who have entrusted in his son Jesus to be their saviour. Jesus is the only one who could take our punishment and rescue us. Because he is the son of God and he is perfect. He is without sin and he reigns in heaven. Have you ever looked at the stars in the sky on a clear night, boys and girls? There are so many and what is even more amazing is that God knows all of them. And just in the same way as God knows all of the stars, he knows your name, he knows my name, he knows what you're thinking, if you're happy, if you're sad. You're so special because, because God loves you and he sent his only son, Jesus, to be our saviour and king. Now, the Bible tells us that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that wise men saw the star in the sky that God had placed there in honour of his son, Jesus' birth. The wise men decided that they would go and see the new king and worship him. The Bible tells us that they came from the east, so they would have had to have prepared for a really, really, really long journey. Can you think of some of the things they would have needed? Well, a suitcase, perhaps some clothes, some warm blankets, and certainly food and water. And also, boys and girls, there was no cars or buses in those days, so they would have probably needed horses or camels. And they also brought gifts. Can anyone tell me what gifts they would have brought? What do you think? Yes, that's right. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now these gifts would have cost a lot of money. So at last they were ready to leave. And what an adventure this was going to be. Now the wise men didn't have sat nav like we do if perhaps we're going on a long journey and we're not really sure exactly where we're going. All that they knew was that they needed to head in the direction of the star and that was towards Israel. The heat from the sun and the burning sand in the desert would have made traveling during the day very uncomfortable. And after the sun went down, it got really cold and the men probably wrapped themselves in blankets and slept closely together to keep warm days and weeks and months went by before they finally arrived. They began to ask people, where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and we have come to worship him. It wasn't long before King Herod heard about these men. He was worried when he heard that they were asking for a king. Why do you think he was worried boys and girls? What do you think? Yes, well done. He was worried because he was the king and he thought that this new king 
would come and try to take his throne. Herod didn't understand that the Lord Jesus had come to be a different king. The Jews wanted a king who would get rid of the Roman government and didn't understand that Jesus would come as a king to do a much more important role. He had come to be their saviour, one who would save them from their sin. And you know, boys and girls, like we talked about earlier, if you remember, we all sin. Maybe we have a bad attitude in school or towards our teachers or perhaps we're disobedient to mums and dads. You know, not doing what we're told is wrong. We all sin and we need our saviour Jesus to rescue us from that sin. But Herod didn't understand all of this, so he secretly sent for the wise men. He asked them when they had seen the star and told them to go to Bethlehem to search for Jesus and when they had found him to bring Jesus back so that he too could worship. But do you think this is what he really wanted to do? No, he wanted to kill Jesus. The wise men didn't know this, so they set off to Bethlehem. I'm sure they were excited after all this time and all this traveling. The Bible tells us that the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came to where Jesus was. God had guided them right to the door where Mary, Joseph and Jesus were. Finally, they had found him. Can you remember the gifts that they bought? What can you remember? That's right, gold, frankincense and myrrh. They bowed down and worshipped Jesus. How amazing was that? And you know, boys and girls, we too can worship Jesus. We can pray every day and thank God and praise him and tell him how amazing he is. And we can show others by the lives that we lead every day and obey our mums and dads. So later that night, an angel warned the wise men in a dream not to go back to Herod. So in the morning, they headed off to their own country, but they took a different route. God also warned Joseph about Herod want, how Herod wanted to get rid of the new king. Nothing would stop God's plan for Jesus to be our saviour. So in a dream, an angel told Joseph to take Mary and Jesus and flee to Egypt. And that's what they did. And they lived in Egypt for some time until an angel came again to Joseph, telling him it was safe to return to Israel. The little family was on the move again, but this time they headed home to Nazareth. And that's where Jesus, our saviour, would grow up. So boys and girls, Jesus is our saviour. He died on the cross and took our punishment that we all deserve for sin. He loves us so much that when we trust him and ask for his forgiveness, he can forgive us all for our sin and be our saviour and king today. So thank you all for listening. You've been really great. If you keep listening, um, I think we're going to do a quiz after and I will hopefully see you all really, really soon. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. Bye. Quiz question one. What did God use to tell the wise men that the Lord Jesus had been born? Question two. What gifts did the wise men bring for the new king? Question three. Did King Herod really want to worship the new king? What did he really want to do? Question four. What is sin? Can you give an example? Question five. How did Herod feel when he realised the wise men hadn't told him 
where Jesus was. Question six. How did God keep his son safe from Herod's evil plan? Answer to question one. God put a special star in the sky. Answer to question two. Gold, frankincense and myrrh. Answer to question three. No, he didn't want to worship Jesus. He wanted to kill him. Answer to question four. Sin is breaking God's rules. Maybe lying, disobeying our parents or teachers. Answer to question five. Herod was angry and ordered that all the boys around Jesus' age and under be killed. Answer to question six. Joseph had a dream and angels told him to take Mary and Jesus to Egypt and to stay there until he was told if it was safe to leave. Well done boys and girls. 